Hello, in this video, I wanted to focus on a couple of tips for presenting a virtual lesson where you wanna give some instruction. What you would do is first launch your video chat and then press the screen share or present option. So this video is really going to focus on some tips for the presenting portion. I'm gonna start with what I think is the easiest option, which would just be pulling up your Google Slides and just presenting to the class that way, simply going through your Google Slides presentation. If you are a PowerPoint user, just as easy would be presenting your PowerPoint. If you are in PowerPoint, something that might come in handy is there are some tools down here. So you could use a pen tool, for example, and you can kind of mark up your presentation as you want, point little things out, maybe underline as you're talking. So that can come in handy when you get out of your presentation by pressing escape. You can actually keep your ink annotations and that could be a way of sharing the notes with students after class. So you can mark it up during your video session and then you can save those ink annotations, upload them to your LMS. So those first two options are really all about just you presenting. They aren't very interactive. Now the second option, which would bring some interactivity in, is to go ahead and add some Pear Deck questions to your Google Slides presentation as I've done in this example here. And then you would present your lesson in Pear Deck just like you would in the classroom and you can have students log in remotely. So even if they're all at home, you can pull this up. Again, if you're doing a screen share, they would see this on their screen, on their computer. They would go to joinpd.com, type in the code just as always, and they could interact while you are presenting. You can then show the responses on your screen so it becomes more interactive and kids can really participate in your lesson. The third option that I'm going to show is still using Pear Deck. And this option I'm going to say is only if you're comfortable with Pear Deck already, otherwise it might feel like too much. But if you are comfortable with Pear Deck, then an option can be for you to say, all right, students, we're going to go into student pace mode and I need you to follow along with me now. Okay, got it. I would just pull up this on your screen so that all your students can log in. And then for you as a teacher, you're also going to log in to the same Pear Deck. Let me show you what that looks like. A little tip is you can just press this give students a link and then open up a new tab and paste it. Now I'm logging in as a student and then if it prompts you to log in again, log in with your same exact teacher account. You can be logged in as a teacher and a student at the same time. And then we're in self-paced, so I would tell students kind of go to this slide. The benefit of doing it this way would be that you can follow along with the class and enter in your answers as class is going on. So it just gives you somewhere to type. When I go to the next question, you can see that I made this a drawing type question. So if I'm logged in as a student, I can actually write on my screen as students are writing on their screen. This is how I personally run my online classes and my online sessions, I log in and I just go back and forth if I wanna to go to the teacher dashboard again and show any responses that students have given, I go back and forth. Again, if you're not comfortable with Pear Deck, this is not going to be what you wanna do, but if you are, this can be a fantastic option. Also, at the end of your session, when you end it, you can publish the takeaways and that would give you a handout to post on your Haiku page after the fact so that students can refer back to your answer key. So this gives interactivity and a way for you to draw on your screen. So that was a third option. And then the fourth thing that I wanna show is sometimes you just want to have a whiteboard to be able to draw on. You can also type on and you can export this after your session actually. This is a collaborative whiteboard, so you could invite another student to edit. You probably don't wanna invite your entire class, that would be chaos, but you could invite one student or two students if you want them to be able to mark up the board and just, again, provide some interactivity within your virtual session. So this is free, it's called allapp.com and it is a whiteboarding app that I really like. It's very simple and it's free. And there are a number of options if you want to explore this. You can also upload a picture, so that could be very helpful. Say I have this question, 
that I prepped ahead of time, I'll place the image, and then I can answer the question if I have some type of drawing tool right on the board beneath. If you were labeling an image or analyzing an image or something like that, this could be great. I wanna try and keep this rather concise, but those are some tips for being able to virtually present your lesson. I hope this helps, bye.